Hi everybody, my name is Benaka Saad from Lucidity and I'm welcoming Helen Peterson from Fulcrum today. She's joining us to share some insights around Salesforce and the benefits of Salesforce in your business. Um, Helen, thank you very much for joining us today. Uh, Bernard, thank you for having me. Really appreciate it. You're very welcome. Um, first off, just tell me a little bit about um, Fulcrum and what you guys do. Sure. So Fulcrum is a Salesforce partner. And what we do is we help customers make the most out of their Salesforce investment. So you would buy the Salesforce license mm -hmm. and then we would help you improve um, the system, the processes and getting people to use the system in a consistent manner. Yeah, nice. So essentially just getting it to work the way you need it work to work to make it as efficient as possible for your business. Yeah, that's exactly right. Yeah, that's exactly right. So yeah. the, the beauty of Salesforce is that it should, it's very easy to customize it to help you solve whatever problem it is that you have. Well, that rolls into my first question really well. What are the best features and what really makes Salesforce unique as a CRM? Mm. Um, I think probably it's not so much a feature, but it's more a concept. And that's the concept of continuous improvement. So when you buy Salesforce, um, you're buying a subscription license. And within that subscription license, you actually get three upgrades to the system each year. And, um, and those upgrades happen like clockwork. It's, um, it's quite an extraordinary feat that what Salesforce actually do. So it's packed, each release is packed with sort of hundreds of features that are voted by the users of Salesforce. Um, and suggested by the users of Salesforce. And, um, and you know, hundreds of thousands of companies get upgraded every year, like clockwork. The amazing thing is that it doesn't actually break when you get upgraded as well. So I don't know any other software company that can actually say that. Yeah, I, I was, I, I don't I didn't want to comment on any other software platform, but I'm like, mm, yep. I know that upgrade, that little notorious upgrade feature, and I'm like, oh, do I really want to click yes to this? Um, exactly. That's yeah. great. That's that is rather unique, and and the fact that they, you know, they try and test, they really put the rigor on these new features, and that they are so proactive, bringing in features when customers ask for it. That's that is a really unique uh, way of positioning the tool, and it also for a customer makes it feel like they're being heard and that, that the tool is going to fit their needs, which is which is really great. Yeah, 100%. Salesforce is absolutely a community. When um, when you get in there, you know, you can um, uh, talk to other users. Um, yeah, it's, it's quite amazing. Nice. So what are some common myths that you hear about um, Salesforce? What are things that people say that are not exactly true? Mm. Probably the one that I hear most often is that Salesforce is too big for me. Um, and, and that is really untrue because when Salesforce first came onto the market, um, they really disrupted the CRM industry by focusing on SMB clients. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and so the, the idea was that you start off with, um, with Salesforce and you grow with Salesforce and Salesforce grows with you. Um, so that I think, you know, whilst you've got global clients, of course, that are on Salesforce now, that concept is still true to Salesforce that um, you, uh, you grow with Salesforce. So you can start off at whatever size um, your particular business is. Oh, perfect. Well, can you give us a little bit more um, insight into that? Like who is the solution best suited for them? Yeah, so I'd probably say, well, that's, that's a difficult one to answer because if you have a customer, then pretty much you can use Salesforce. Okay. Um, so, you know, Salesforce probably isn't just about the sales cycle. Mm -hmm. um, over the years, it, it has expanded. It's, it's about the full customer life cycle from prospects all the way through to customer service, renewals, um, so you have products like marketing automation, sales cloud, service cloud, e-commerce, analytics. So 
as you can see, there's there's a lot of products that you can actually purchase from Salesforce. Um, so I'd probably say that the system is best tailored. Well, when you start with your Salesforce foundation, focus on what is the biggest problem that you're trying to resolve first. So for example, we had a customer who, one of their problems was um, customer service. And so they focused on customer service first and then looked at marketing and sales after that. Okay, cool. So you can kind of like, so essentially, it's not just that you scale it with your business as it grows, you also scale it as you require more solutions within the business. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly right. Exactly right. And so, and the beauty of Salesforce being a subscription product is it's, you know, it's per user per month. So, um, you know, the if you have a small amount of users, you're paying less for Salesforce. When your company grows, then you would put more users on and then of course um, you can expand with those numbers of users but also as you're saying with what we'd call cross sell so you know different products as well yeah yeah Mar marketing opportunities and you know other automation etc etc like layering it on top <laughs> exactly and that probably one of the messages of salesforce is customer 360 so putting the customer at the center of every one of your business processes is is absolutely possible. Yeah, cool. Cool, so then from that, is there anyone that the solution is not a right fit for necessarily? Mm, that's um, not really, because most people have a customer that you know, uh, but I would probably say that like there, 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 are, there, <laughs> there, are, there are companies that are happy with the status quo. You know, that they're, they're they're rolling along, they're not looking to improve their processes, they're not looking to grow. So probably people like that. And then they do exist, you know. There are people happy with the status quo. Is there a version of the product that is scaled for, for a startup, essentially? Like somebody who's just getting up off the ground, hasn't been, you know, doesn't have some years behind them in business. Is Salesforce still a right fit for a startup? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So there are um, a number of licenses, um, like levels of licenses, which I won't really go into because um, as a partner, we don't sell the Salesforce license. We actually sell, um, we help you configure so, yeah. the system. But for us, yes, we absolutely have startups and we've got um, accelerators that are aligned to a particular um, vertical. So, and we can get you up and running on the Salesforce platform really quickly, yeah. you know, sort of four weeks mm -hmm. and, um, uh, you know, away you go. And, and you continuously improve, right? That's the, that's the idea. So you start off with a great foundation um, and then move from there. Yeah, very cool, very cool. I, like, I would, um, I would, I would say you, you hit, something really, really good in, in there. And the fact that like, yes, there's the fact that you can grow it with the systems that you have, um, that you should be thinking about it to, to, to streamline your business. And if you're a business that's in a place that you're not looking to accelerate your growth, the systems are working for you and you're not, there aren't, uh, you're not hitting roadblocks where you're looking for solutions, then if you can't see a value in it, then, then it's hard to convince, but I think the other thing that you really hit the nail on the head is the is the service part of it. And and you know we have conversations with our clients, and they often skip over the service and the customization that's required to get a system like this to really really work for you, rather than you trying to squeeze into into the box and fit into the into the system. And I think that is extremely important. And the number of times you cross over a client that says oh, we have a CRM, but it doesn't really work. And then you kind of, in your head, you're going, well, how much work did you do to get it to work? You know? Yeah. It's not like you just pull it out of the box and it's perfect, you know? You don't pull a bike out of the box and the wheels are already on it. You gotta, you gotta put the wheels on, you know? Yeah, that's exactly right. Um, there's probably a couple of things to that. I think that, um, that Salesforce is, it's, it's more like an engine and it's supposed to configure it. So so it's supposed to have a different, it's supposed to have your flavor um, on this, on uh, within your particular system. So, um, so there's that, but there are also other CRMs that probably you can't actually customize that much. Yeah. And, um, and so that's potentially where, you know, you'd have people that say, oh, it doesn't really work for us. It's more like, a, you know, it holds your contacts. 
and 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 that's about it. You know, phone yeah. numbers and addresses. Um, and a CRM should be way more than way that. more than that for sure. For sure. Um, so in saying that, what other systems does uh, Salesforce integrate with? It's probably a big long list, but <laughs> yeah. So I think when Salesforce Salesforce is a very open system, and so when they first um, you know, develop their product, maybe the integration was key. Yeah. Um, and so they have a really open API. Um, mm -hmm. And so anything that, any other system that you're connecting to, if they have an API, then we can integrate with it. Oh, wow. Um, so probably common integrations would be an ERP system. Mm -hmm. So to actually be allowing um, your, say your salespeople who are out on the road and they've got Salesforce on their mobile, yep. um, and they're just about to go and walk into a customer site. Um, they can actually see, you know, what orders have been placed recently and get a full view of the customer before actually speaking with them. Um, so that ERP integration is gold. Yeah. People. And it's, you can't, uh, generally ERP systems aren't sort of mobile friendly or, you know, it takes a bit to actually log into the system and get that, that information. It's not about the customer. Yeah. An ERP yeah. system isn't about the customer at the centre, right? It's more about the processes, the back office behind it. Mm -hmm. um, probably other integrations would be, um, you know, you can integrate HubSpot, for example. So if you've got marketing automation, um, and just sort of nurturing that client in HubSpot. When, when that prospect is actually ready for that one-to-one -one conversation with the salesperson, um, integrate that with Salesforce um, and, uh, uh, you know, and basically hand it over to the, to the salesperson at that point. Um, and actually seeing things like what marketing assets that prospect is actually engaged with yeah. during that marketing um, journey is, is amazing as well. It makes for a really relevant conversation with your salesperson. Yeah, and, yeah. Because I, I noticed that with myself, I do um, sales within this business, and just being able to say, "Hey, I know that you're interested in," and being able to kind of feed and build up from from there, rather than being like, oh, "What is this conversation about?" Like, "Hi, my name is Ma. We do this. What are you looking for?" You know. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And they've already they've already done their investigation, you know, if they're talking to you. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. What about accounting software as well? Your zeros and your QuickBooks and your MYOBs? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So um, you know, you can go, uh, yes, we've done actually all of those integrations. Um <laughs> and um uh, probably there's also closed systems as well that you can actually integrate with. So, so when you say integrate, so it's an interesting question because it can you can actually get systems, you can get sorry data from systems in many ways. Mm. So there's a lot of closed systems, like say X Plan for example, financial accounting. That's actually quite a closed system. It's quite difficult to get the information from X Plan, but there are ways to extract that um, information and probably use more like a batch processing to get that information back into Salesforce. So it doesn't have to, it doesn't have to be sort of real time, you know, um, immediate integration. It can be anywhere from, you know, once a week, daily, that type of thing, more like a batch oh, processing. Cool. And all of those products are, to actually do that type of batch integration, you're actually using um, free products as well. Wow, I bet a lot of people, are, their ears just pricked up. You said the word free, there's on what? Yeah, 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 absolutely. There's, um, there's something called the App Exchange in Salesforce where you have all of these additional products that have been um, uh, that have been created to help you use Salesforce in a more effective manner. And there's one particular one called Salesforce Labs, and they have amazing apps that are really like productive types of apps, and they're all free. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Geez, they must be getting paid from Salesforce or something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, cool. So then, now that we're kind of talking around price, I know this is a tough question. But what are the kind of ballparks for for the service that you guys provide, and and what are the typical ROIs that you would see uh, from a, for a customer? Mm. ROI is a really interesting question, and it's one of. Uh, it's one of the things that our account managers um, focus on. Yeah. So we had a construction um, 
like a, a customer that was in the construction industry and their pain point was that they were just getting too many leads that what they couldn't service the leads that were that were coming through uh, nice problem to have know, right <laughs> and so in terms of ROI um, yeah. you know we looked at um, they had both residential and commercial clients um, the average deal size for a resi deal is around 10k mm -hmm. um, and so if they were actually able to just get one additional sale per week then you're looking at an additional 480k in revenue wow. um, for a commercial client their average deal size is around sort of 150k so if you can just get an additional commercial client per month Mm. They're looking at around 1.65 million in additional revenue. So they're really compelling numbers. Yeah. The other way we look at it is also from a, a, a process improvement perspective as well. So when they did analysis, like a lot of the problems with this construction company was that it was really difficult to quote. It was very manual and just too labor intensive. And so by you know, putting everything into the system and allowing those quotes to come through quickly, there was an additional 250k a year in savings off of, off of you know, just employee time. A lot of people don't take that into account, the internal saving, not just yeah. the external um, efficiencies that you create and the, the, the prospects, you know, like being able to, to farm and manage uh, new leads in the business, but the internal saving of, you know, overheads, organisational, um, time constraints, like you start to gain all that back when you put in a system that really works. Exactly, and I think one of the things that what Fulcrum is really good at doing is actually measuring that ROI. So once you, you know, you talk about it in the sales process, yes, we bought Salesforce, yes, we're going with Fulcrum services. Yeah. Um, let's actually make sure that you are getting the ROI that you expect as well. And that's something that we do throughout the engagement with all our customers. Yeah, very, very cool. And then. With, with somebody who's engaging with your services, um, how does it typically work? Is it is it kind of lump sum, month on month? Do you guys build the program around the business? How do you offer your services to to a, to a client that you're onboarding? Yeah, so going back to that concept of continuous improvement again. So what we want to do is get you up and running on the Salesforce platform as quickly as possible. Mm -hmm. um, so create a really strong foundation um, that will then, so that's generally, um, a, a, we'd call that a project. Mm -hmm. um, and so, uh, you know, you can, it, it will depend on the, on the price of, of that as to, as to what we're actually doing. But um, sort of say in four to six weeks, you can be up and running with that foundation. Yeah, cool. The idea then is for, for you to start using the system and your users to be using the system in a consistent manner. And then um, uh, that will actually help you get your outputs from your CRM as well. I I'll just say that probably a lot of people spend time putting information into their CRM, um, yet they're not looking at extracting that information to help them, you know, create actionable insights and in how they're going to, to change their business. So get everyone using it in a consistent manner. Um, we have managed services that can um, that can help with that so we have a, a great customer success team that you know just a couple of hours a week we can uh, be helping you with that and then when you you know you're you're growing or there's a new problem to solve or you want to expand then you get the project team back in again and then do a project and then go so yeah we offer sort of that full freight of the project and then the administration services as well yeah cool cool could you could you ballpark that 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 price a little bit? I know it would vary depending on the business size and need of the implementation and um, etc. But is there is there kind of a, a medium that you guys see uh, from a budgetary perspective? Yeah. So if we were looking at a project that was say sort of um, four to six weeks, mm -hmm. you're probably looking at around twenty to twenty five k. Yeah. Okay. Cool. cool. Yeah. Perfect. Awesome, um, and then you've already kind of covered off the time, so you're looking at a four to six week kind of kind of timeline for that implementation, which is actually it's quick. quick. This quick, it's yeah. quick, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Crazy. We're trying to get up and running. Yeah, because that's because we have our accelerators, so you know that that are aligned to the industry vertical that mm. the that the prospect is in. 
And we do say it's a bit like a roller coaster, like, hang on, <laughs> here we go. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> but, um, but I mean, time is really important because Salesforce is a subscription product, means you're paying per user per month. So you want to be up and running quickly. Um, so just get that, getting that foundation right um, is really key. Um, and you know, not putting too many crayons in the in the basket as well on that in that foundation, I think is really important because you can yeah. get value very quickly out of Salesforce. Yeah, and it also stops the hindrance to it becoming a useful tool for the business. If you try and get everything done all at once, you'll start. You're just going to hit a bit of a, a bit of a bottleneck. You're not going to have enough time to give all the data that's needed and all this kind of and the setup, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And I think that also tailors back into the fact what, to why you should. Um, have a service provider to help you set it up correctly. Just as you said, you could buy it and put it in your business and not be using it effectively and literally just throwing money away. Whereas you could get the service on top and make sure it's implemented correctly. Make sure you're actually gathering the data that you need and leveraging that data to, to improve your business. And that's the real benefit behind, behind systems like this. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. So for you guys, who is a great a great fit for you? Who would you love to chat to, and why are those uh, businesses that you guys like to work with? Um, who would I like to chat with? Like, <laughs> do you watch um, MasterChef? I, I, like, I like Reynold from MasterChef. I find him a fascinating person. <laughs> Just you want to get on the speed dial for you? <laughs> Uh, Fulcrum went out for a, um, you know, after lockdown, our first um, catch up in about three months. We were at Spice Alley in Chippendale. Yeah. He's right next to his restaurant. It's in the same area his, as his restaurant. Yeah. He's a very creative person, but very structured person. So I find him quite fascinating. But um, prospects who I'd like to talk to, yeah. um, you know, we, um, what I love about my job is that we talk to companies that are on a growth path like they're just smashing it and they're really excited to be expanding their business and um and it's always a fascinating story to hear from them and we would love to help them yeah cool cool so so industries right now that that would be growing probably you know um your construction industries they're they're still going gangbusters at the moment um, yeah and you guys have quite a lot of experience in that space as, as well, right? So I think construction, transport and logistics. Um, Probably there... also, um, I'd say sort of manufacturing and distribution. When I say manufacturing, I do classify Australian custom, like Australian disties as, um, as part of manufacturing there. Um, uh, we've got a great solution for them. Um, and, uh, consumer goods so you know if you're selling um, products into stores or on the on your website etc we've got some great solutions there as well yeah now is a good time to, to jump on that as retail starting to open up um, again get your systems in place get your systems done right and then you'll be ready to, to grow and, and really just push forward uh, after all this you know, lockdown and everything so um, I think it's a good time if, if you're a retailer to look into a solution like um, like Salesforce and CRM to and having a combination of like a like you know an e-commerce site as well mm -hmm. as bricks and mortar I think is um is, is great a hundred percent a hundred percent especially to have that client knowledge you know a customer comes in at the store level and then you can then also see what they're doing at a, on a digital level and be able to then go oh here's some stuff that you might be interested in and make things more personalized um I think is one of the the key aspects of building a great CRM is to really be able to understand your Customers. Yeah, customers yeah. at the center of everything. That's right. <laughs> That'll be the, the catchphrase of the, of the video. The customer <laughs> at the center of everything. <laughs> well, cool. awesome. Awesome, Helen. I really appreciate your time and joining us for this video. Um, we will have this out and let you know when it's all ready to go. Please, people who are listening and following along, leave some questions and some feedback and we will make sure that Helen gets them and uh, shoots you back some information. Uh, so if there's anything you wanna know about Salesforce or how to get it up and running and, and killing it in your business, then pop it into the comments and we will endeavor to get back to you. Um, again, thank you very much, Helen. Ah, oh, thanks, I hope that was okay. I'm really glad that my dog didn't bark halfway through this. <laughs>
<laughs> it was fantastic. No, honestly, a real pleasure. And I love getting those deeper insights into Salesforce. Thank you very, very much. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.